Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome to a little Battletech ramble. Um, this one's going to be on the Battle Mech, or Mech for short, because when you think Battletech, the first thing you should think are these mechs. That's kind of their bread and butter. Um, mechs are an armored uh, combat walker, essentially. I like to describe them as multi-story tall, walking nuclear reactors, armored up, and armed to the teeth. Because that's kind of what they are. They're a ground combat vehicle, essentially, you know, a walker, but they're able to operate um, in vacuums, they're able to operate in space or other zero-g environments. Uh, they're also able to operate um, underwater in a variety of temperature extremes. The, the mech is uh, able to operate in a lot of different places. And yeah, there are aircraft, tanks, artillery, infantry in Battletech, but the mech is the king of the battlefield. So a little bit of fluff, and then we'll go into the weight classes of mechs, because mechs are broken down by weight. So a little bit of fluff for a mech, it's piloted by a single pilot, and um, the mech uh, controls are essentially a throttle, a joystick, and a dual pedal system. It's kind of like a mixture between a plane and a helicopter in terms of pilot controls. And that's further augmented by a neural helmet, which links the mech's central computer to the nervous system of the pilot for things like balance and other stuff. And this linkage is what makes the mech superior. It, it kind of um, you kind of take the mech and the pilot, and you make them almost one in that regard um, through the neural helmet and their controls. And this leads to a great degree of control and maneuverability with these mechs, regardless of weight class. So that leads to the mech being able to basically outmaneuver and do things that no other combat vehicle can do, you know, in the Battletech universe. So that's why it's considered superior. Now, you're going to notice a decent amount of these mechs if you start looking at them um, on your own. Not all of them, but a very good amount of them have fully articulated hands. And this is because of all the control that the mech pilot has over the mech, they can do things like grab objects, hold on to things, um, manipulate things, and even kind of sort of climb with some of these mechs. Uh, so it really gives the mech an added degree of versatility by having those those uh, limbs, or those hands, I should say. So regardless of weight class, there are different things a mech can have. One of those things to talk about real quick here is a jump jet. Jump jets let the mech kind of, as you expect, take jumps over short distances, increases maneuverability. Um, however, it does generate heat. The mech is piloted by a fusion pilot. The mech is powered by a fusion engine, and as such, when the mech does things, it's going to generate heat. It combats that with heat sinks, but heat generation can be a problem. That'll be its own little ramble. Now, with that being said, before I go into weight classes, there are two ways you can build a mech. You can build a mech in a fixed configuration mode, or not mode, a fixed configuration style, and basically what that means is everything's hardwired into the mech. Nothing's easy to remove, nothing's easy to replace. Um, in terms of weapon systems, it's all there wired into the mech. Not a bad thing at all, but that is the fixed configuration standard. So therefore, um, these mechs don't have as many different variations. You may see a couple variations here and there for all these fixed configuration mechs. Some of them tend to be just upgrades to the chassis, and others tend to be, okay, we need to take this weapon out and put this weapon in. But you can't do it on the fly. It's built one way or the other. That's where the Omni mech comes in, which is the second way to build it. Now, I'm not going to go into the factions here, so all I'm going to say is one faction, one overarching faction, basically invented and created the Omni mech. And eventually, the rest of the Battletech universe that can create mechs eventually adopted the design of an Omni mech. Now, what an Omni mech is is basically a modular weapon mech. It's a mech chassis that has hard points instead of fixed uh, places or instead of fixed weapons on the mech itself. There's these hard points or pod space, as it's called, and you can put weapon systems in and take them out pretty easily. It makes it very modular. So you can change weapon systems um, on the fly with these mechs almost as long as you have the stuff there to do it. It makes downtime and repair and retrofit very quick for these mechs and it lets one mech chassis or any mech chassis that's an Omni mech fulfill different battlefield roles pretty easily. 
So that's the Omni Mech. Uh, it also has strengths and weaknesses for being built like an Omni Mech. Um, that's all like fluff stuff. So with that being said, let's look at the the classifications of battle mechs. And there's really four weight classes that I'm going to be talking about. Light, medium, heavy, and assault. That's basically all you're going to see when it comes to full-on battle mechs. Now, um, this is done, like I said, by weight, and it's done in increments of five tons because there's a weight ver there's a weight scale in each weight class. And well, for example, utilizing the light mech, the first one to talk about, they start off at 20 tons, and they can be as heavy as 35 tons. But it's done in increments of five, so it's 20, 25, 30, 35 tons. And I'm not going to say it's always done that way because that's a pretty bold statement to make about anything when you say always, but I've never seen any mech in Battletech that was an oddball weight. I've always seen it in 20, 25, 30, 35, um, things like that, in, in five ton config, um, uh, increments, that's the word. So the light mech, like I said, 20 to 35 tons, and these things they're they're light mechs, so they're lightly armed, they're lightly armored, they're not that big in comparison to your big mechs out there, but they're fast. They're very fast, very maneuverable. And real quick, pausing, um, I'm talking about this, the mech weight classes in terms of their fluff. I'm not talking about how they actually um, are perceived maybe in the miniature game or in the video games or whatever it is. So, light mechs, you know, I'm pausing, um, <laughs> they are nimble, fast, and they're you know designed for roles like recon and other type of scouting things. They're good at sabotaging certain things, hit and runs in certain against certain facilities and certain places. And uh anti personnel roles are very good for if something, let's say a convoy is able to uh, move at particularly fast speed, it can be backed up by a light mech or a, a, a bunch of light mechs because they can kind of keep up with it very well in comparison to heavier mechs that can't. And they're very good at supporting um, and all the mechs are good at supporting each other but the light mechs will also in, in heavy combat situations be there to support other mechs as well. Um, that leads us to the medium mech. The medium mech in the fluff of Battletech you know, is considered the workhorse. These things start off at 40 tons and they can be as heavy as 55 tons. And I say, you know, in the fluff they're considered the workhorse because when you read novels and look at things when it comes to medium mechs, they're everywhere. And in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions, the medium mech class is the true jack of all trades class. It's not really going to master one particular style of doing something, but these mechs really can work for you in a pinch. So, it can scout, it's not as fast. It can hit and run, it's not as fast. It can um, duke it out brawler style, it's not going to deal as much damage. It can, um, you know, force attention onto itself, although it can't take as much damage. So it's really a good jack of all trades. It's, it's never a bad decision to throw a me uh, medium mech into your lineup fluff wise because uh, it's going to be able to carry its weight very well. So that's the medium mech and while they're not as fast and nimble as a light mech they still have plenty of speed and maneuverability. They got a good blend of speed, firepower, and armor. Put it to you that way. Up from the medium mech is the heavy mech. Starting off at 60 tons, capping the scales at 75 tons. The heavy mech is really in my opinion when you, f re you really see a broad spectrum of purpose-built combat mechs. You can have purpose-built combat light and purpose-built combat medium mechs, but on the whole you're going to see a wide, a wide variety of combat-built, purposely built to be combat mechs in the heavy chassis category. Um, these things are heavier than a medium mech, so they're slower generally and less nimble than a medium mech, but for their size, for the sheer firepower and armor they can bring to the to the battlefield, they have pretty good mobility for their size. So, um, you know, that maneuverability that they still possess, combined with the added tonnage for weapons and armor, leads to a very uh, capable mech at dishing out damage and taking it. So that's your heavy mechs. 
not much else to say there. They're they're really designed for combat and do a very good job of it. Um, assault mechs. These are the big, the big boys of the mech class. They start off at 80 tons and they crush the sta the scales at 100 tons. They, you know that's just a lot of weight, and they're the heaviest of the battle mech chassis. When you absolutely, positively want overwhelming firepower, you call in the assault mechs. These things can pack as much weaponry and armor onto their chassis in weight as the weight of some light and medium mechs out there. So they can be very dangerous. The trade-off is speed. These are the mechs that really need to be supported properly because while outmaneuvering them that doesn't guarantee a kill, they can be outmaneuvered pretty easily in comparison to the other mech classes out there, but they are the end-all be-all for assaulting fortified positions and they're very good at taking damage, soaking it up, and defending a position where they have to take the hits. So these mechs can take a lot of hits, these mechs can dish out a lot of damage, but they're slow and not very maneuverable. So that's your four classes of mechs. Um, they're all really cool in my opinion. I think all of them um, are worth looking at if you're going to build, let's say, a mech battle group. Uh, I don't think anyone should be just disregarded. That's just my opinion. And um, from here, what I'm going to do before I talk about specific mechs and their own little rambles, I'm going to cover the idea of heat buildup in a mech, because that's important. And then I'm going to, or not in any particular order, but I'm going to go over the heat of a mech, I'm going to go over how to kill a mech, and I'm going to go over uh, the weapon systems that these mechs can have, and, and the weapon systems will be its own little mini-series. The reason I want to do all that, plus this basic little overview of mechs, is that way when I go over mechs specifically, in their own little rambles, you'll have a very good idea and ability to understand these mechs just by me describing them in terms of what their potential capability would be. You won't be lost. So that's the idea there. I also have other ideas, plenty of things to ramble about in the Battletech universe aside from keeping it just uh, the mechs. I can talk about other stuff. And of course I got my 40k rambles that I'm still obviously doing. So plenty of things to happen. <laughs> but uh, that's the mechs of Battletech in a very uh, overview type of way. They're pretty cool. And as I said, they are the kings of the battlefield in Battletech. So that's really it. Thanks for sticking through it. And until next time, take it easy.